Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss the Italian term spezzato, how it relates to classic menswear, and how you can leverage it to put together uniquely smart and nonchalant looks. <laughs> Menswear connoisseurs know the term spezzato to describe the inimitable way that Italian gentlemen break up their suits, wearing the jacket of one with the trousers of another in a seemingly effortless style. However, doing this yourself with a measure of success can be difficult, at least at first. So, in order to help you pull it off effectively, today's video will discuss what spezzato is and some of the key do's and don'ts in employing it. So, let's first answer the question of what specifically spezzato means when it comes to menswear, and we'll start by clearing up any ambiguity that might arise, since we have already produced videos on two other Italian S words. The first is sprezzatura, which refers to an overall aesthetic of nonchalant and slightly rumpled dressing. And the second is scorpacciata, which is all about savoring the seasonality of different types of garments. And you can find our two videos on these topics here. Today's word, though, spezzato, means broken in Italian, and it's used in multiple senses, for everything from a broken arm to a broken heart, showcasing the risk involved. When it comes specifically to menswear, then, spezzato refers to breaking up a suit, which is to say an outfit of matching jacket, trousers, and perhaps a waistcoat, to mix and match them together. You might wear the jacket and waistcoat of one suit with the trousers of another, or various other combinations of those three, or sometimes just two, wardrobe pieces. And although there isn't a formal distinction, there are two main different ways of accomplishing a spezzato look. The first, which is more difficult to pull off overall, boldly flaunts the idea that you are mismatching elements from two suits. This, of course, presents a relatively strong style statement. Meanwhile, the second and more subdued technique involves taking elements of two suits and combining them in a way that more readily visually suggests an outfit of sport coat and odd trousers. Indeed, if you look online under the hashtag of spezzato, you'll sometimes see outfits that are, in fact, just that. Sport coats and odd trousers paired together rather than elements from two real suits. Both of these spezzato techniques can be used to seemingly expand a small wardrobe, which can come in handy when you're just starting out in the world of tailored menswear. If perhaps you've only got three suits in your wardrobe in colors of navy, gray, and brown, you could mix and match them in different ways, such as navy with gray pants, gray with navy pants, brown with navy pants, and so on. By the way, we've also produced videos on how to pair gray and brown, gray and blue, and brown and blue, and you can find those in our color mixing and matching playlist here. Within the past decade or so, a new third definition of spezzato has also arisen, however. This involves taking the jacket and sometimes the waistcoat of a suit and pairing those elements on top with something much more casual on the bottom half of your outfit, like jeans, cargo pants, or even shorts. Overall, though, we can't say that this expanded definition is too surprising, since this is an even more intentionally broken style, so the label is apropos. So that's what spezzato is out of the way. Next, let's cover how you can pull it off effectively. We've broken this section into six separate tips, and the first here is to avoid overly formal suiting looks. More formally styled suit jackets, meaning ones that are heavily structured with padded shoulders, peaked lapels, and full canvassing, are typically harder to break apart and mismatch with other garments. These types of jackets more explicitly shout suit to the viewer, so they're generally going to look off when paired with other kinds of trousers, unless, of course, you explicitly want to call attention to your use of the spezzato technique, in which case all bets are off. 
And in terms of materials, worsted wools can also be difficult to incorporate in spezzato looks for the same reason. You can pull off combining the pieces from two solid worsted wool suits, but if you try to incorporate a pattern like a glen check, this can be even more difficult as the garments will look orphaned. So as an example, it's probably best to leave your double-breasted chalk stripe jacket in its original and intended suit configuration. Chalk stripes and pinstripes are particularly difficult to split up because they're so commonly associated with the power suit style and because stripes are rarely seen on odd jackets with the exception of rowing blazers. And secondly, stripes, especially smaller ones, look best when they have an uninterrupted line from head to toe. For more on stripes, by the way, you can find our two-part series here. The top halves of windowpane or houndstooth suits, meanwhile, are quite good candidates for spezzato looks. Since there are a great many sport coats out there in these patterns, and they don't emphasize vertical lines in particular. As you may have guessed then, the best candidates for easily pulling off spezzato looks in terms of jackets are those that do resemble sport coats. With appropriate patterns, more casual features like patch pockets, and an overall informal styling. The second key to mixing and matching parts of different suits, aside from finding colors that work together, which is only natural, is finding fabrics that are also harmonious. We'll again mention seasonality here as an obvious consideration, given that, for example, you wouldn't mix a summer weight wool silk linen jacket with moleskin pants. Instead, you'll want to combine jackets and trousers of roughly the same fabric weight, and the easiest way to do this is to combine the same fabrics, perhaps just in different colors. These can often be found ready-made in department stores under the heading of suit separates. As an example here, if your jacket and trousers are both in worsted wool, you may be able to pair them up, but trying to pair one worsted garment with another flannel garment may be more difficult, and harder still would be pairing something like worsted and linen together. If the look you're going for is meant to more closely resemble a sport coat and odd trousers than a true broken suit, though, you can experiment to a greater degree with fabric mixing as well, since after all, you wouldn't normally wear a linen jacket with a different color of linen trouser, but might instead go for something like cotton in the trousers. Our third tip today is to choose suits that have similar fits. You're probably well aware that different retailers have different fit schemes for their suits in things like classic, modern, or slim fit. For a well-executed spezzato look then, it's a good idea not to mix the fits of different suits. For example, wearing a particularly slim fitted jacket with wide leg trousers, or wearing modern slim trousers with a baggy jacket. This is simply because the look would have an inherent sense of imbalance to it, making you look either bottom or top heavy, respectively. Our fourth tip today is an especially significant one, and it's to make sure that you're creating enough contrast between your different elements. Remember here that you're using similar principles to how you would go about pairing a sport coat and odd trousers. You want to have elements that aren't too similar without actually being the same. Why is this? Simply stated, it's because you don't want to look like you were trying to fully match your garments together, but failed to do so. Instead, you'll want to make it obvious that top and bottom of your outfit are supposed to be separate. Usually this is done with coordinated colors, like the brown and blue pairing we mentioned before, although it can be done with differing shades within the same overall color family, for example, different shades of brown and tan, or colors within the grayscale. Many men do find wearing the darker tone on top to be easier, with something like a brown jacket and beige trousers, though with charcoal gray and light gray you can go either way, and with something like navy blue and sky blue you'd probably go for the darker color on the bottom, unless of course you were wearing something that was to resemble a blazer. 
To increase contrast even further, you can incorporate pattern into one of the garments, typically going with a patterned jacket and solid trousers, or for a slightly bolder look, a solid jacket and patterned trousers. Our fifth tip here is to use a unifying color to tie pieces of your outfit together. In other words, a way to integrate the whole of your look while still wearing elements from two different suits is to pick one garment that features a color element of the other. Most typically, this is again going to mean solid pants with a jacket that contains the color of the pants, such as blue trousers worn with a gray jacket that contains a blue window pane. The inclusion of the trouser color in the jacket visually binds the two elements together more closely, and it can be done in the opposite way, though as we mentioned before, pattern trousers are going to be bolder, as well as a bit harder to find overall. Our sixth and final tip here is to remember that the overall effect of spezzato is to be casual. Remember, of course, that as soon as you break up the uniformity of a suit, it will automatically become less formal, just as an ensemble of sport coat and odd trousers is inherently less formal than a suit would be. And if you're employing the modern third meaning of spezzato, a suit jacket with casual pants, this is even more obvious. And given the emphasis on dressing down, the rest of your outfit can also include more casual elements, such as monk straps or loafers instead of Oxford shoes, a denim or OCBD shirt, or other elements of casual sprezzatura style dressing. On the other hand though, if you're in an especially professional environment or going in for a formal job interview, keep in mind that wearing a traditional unified suit may be the better choice than experimenting with breaking it up or, of course, leaving out a piece entirely. Now, spezzato is already an advanced technique, but there are still ways to push the envelope of classic style even further while using it. This first type of advanced spezzato, which we would recommend, involves using three-piece suits in the look. When the waistcoat from a three-piece suit is involved, there are many more options opened up for mixing and matching, but it also makes it impossible to get away from the impression that you are mixing and matching suits together. The first method is to wear the vest and trousers of one suit while wearing the jacket from another. This is an interesting and smart look that is going to give you a uniform appearance up the middle of your outfit. The second method then would naturally be to wear the jacket and vest from one suit with the trousers of another, which is going to reinforce the division of the outfit even more, especially if you're working with different fabric textures. Lastly here, you can push spezzato to its absolute limit by combining the elements from three different suits together. The jacket from one, the waistcoat from another, and the pants from a third. This will give you the most stylistic flexibility and can generate looks that are quite complex, but similarly to matching multiple patterns in an outfit, it has a high risk of failure, requiring a sophisticated eye for what looks good and a willingness to stand out boldly. On the opposite end of the spectrum of what we might generously call advanced spezzato would be the technique of pairing a suit jacket with more casual trouser options, as we've alluded to a few times before already. Our most traditionally minded viewers are likely to scorn the idea of combining a suit jacket together with casual pants like chinos or jeans, but we've included it here for the sake of complete coverage. So, if you do want to pursue this look and avoid looking like the man at the mall who's combined a standard navy suit jacket with heavy structuring with light wash denim jeans, it's critically important that you first find a pair of casual trousers that aren't too informal, and second, that you again find a suit jacket that is overall styled more like a sport coat. 
And it should go without saying here, but things like shorts or sweatpants combined with suit jackets are strictly within the realm of fashion as opposed to traditional menswear. If you'd like to wear them, more power to you, but those aren't the kinds of looks we're discussing here today. Just because menswear icons like Ralph Lauren can get away with pairing a tuxedo jacket with light wash denim and mountaineering boots, and even then, not very well, doesn't mean that you should try to do the same thing. Overall then, Spezzato is really about experimenting and having fun and getting the most out of your own wardrobe. You can think of it sort of like a game, with the parameters being the outfits you own, your own personal taste, and how much you want to be noticed by others. For some, the goal might be stretching a smaller capsule wardrobe and making different suit elements look more like a sport coat and odd trousers, while for others, emphasizing the broken nature of two different suits is going to be front and center. By the way, the next time you're buying a suit, you may want to consider how well its pieces can be broken up separately so you can get multiple looks out of it instead of just one. So then, the use of Spezzato is one breakup we'd encourage you to be a part of. In today's video, I'm wearing elements of two different suits from my own wardrobe in what is effectively one of the advanced Spezzato techniques we outlined earlier. Most of the suits I have in my own wardrobe are solids and in fairly neutral colors, so I've attempted to pair the trousers and waistcoat of my charcoal gray suit with the jacket of my royal blue suit, hoping that there's enough contrast between the slightly lighter jacket and the trousers and waistcoat than there would be if the jacket were in a darker navy blue. My shirt features a micro-grid pattern of pink and blue on a white ground, and I've used similar warm color elements in my Fort Belvedere shadow-striped socks of pink and gray, as well as my dark oxblood penny loafers, which again bring out that warm color feel. The blue in the checked pattern of the shirt helps to tie into the blue color of my jacket, and the loafers also reinforce the casual feel of the outfit. Along with my socks, other Fort Belvedere accessories I'm wearing today include my cufflinks, which are our platinum-plated sterling silver eagle claw models featuring blue lapis lazuli as the stone, my pocket square, which is in cerulean blue and an art deco Egyptian scarab design with other colors including burnt orange, magenta, black, and an orange contrast edge, and my boutonniere, which is a relatively new addition to our range. It's a pale pink mini carnation with just a bit of purple detailing at the edges of the petals. A vintage bow tie from J Press rounds out the look. It's in a dark red color featuring a small geometric pattern in blue and gray to harmonize with other elements of my outfit, including the jacket, waistcoat and trousers, and the loafers as well. And of course, for all of the Fort Belvedere accessories I'm wearing in today's video, you can take a look at the Fort Belvedere shop here.